Mike Menser's training philosophy has divided the bodybuilding world for decades. Some call it genius, others call it lazy. But what does science really say? Was his low-volume, high-intensity approach truly effective? Let's start with the foundation of his system, training to failure. Menser believed every set should be taken to absolute failure, where no further rep is possible. He argued that this level of intensity was the only way to trigger muscle growth. Modern research agrees that pushing close to failure is effective, but not always mandatory. A 2020 meta-analysis by Benito and colleagues showed that muscle growth rose as total weekly sets increased. This means intensity is key, but total volume still matters. Menser was partly right, yet he may have underestimated how much total work some lifters need. Now let's talk about sets and total training volume. Mike Menser recommended performing only two to seven sets per workout, and rarely more than two sets for the same exercise. He believed that any extra work beyond failure simply caused overtraining. Modern science provides an interesting comparison. A review by Gargic and colleagues found that training frequency, whether you train a muscle once or several times a week, didn't significantly affect strength or growth as long as the total weekly volume was equal. In other words, Menser's low-frequency approach can absolutely work, but only if those few sets are pushed with maximum intensity and proper recovery. Next, let's look at rest and recovery, the foundation of his philosophy. Menser often said that growth happens outside the gym, not inside it. He recommended at least 72 hours between workouts to allow full recovery. Modern research supports this idea. Studies by Damas and by Miller both found that myofibrillar protein synthesis, the process responsible for muscle growth, remains elevated for 48 to 72 hours after intense training. That means the body continues building muscle long after the workout is done. Menser's recovery advice clearly stands the test of time. Now, what about rep tempo? Menser encouraged slow, deliberate movements through every phase, concentric, eccentric, and isometric. He believed slower reps created more control and tension on the muscle. However, modern studies show that neither slow nor fast tempos are superior for building muscle. What really matters is maintaining tension and progressive overload. Still, Menser's controlled tempo has value. It reduces momentum and helps improve focus, especially for beginners or those learning to lift with precision. Another key feature of his system was combining full-range repetitions with partial reps. He often finished a set with partial reps once he could no longer complete the full motion. Interestingly, research from Cassiano and colleagues shows that both full and partial ranges can optimize muscle growth, depending on the exercise and muscle length. For example, biceps, triceps, and quadriceps often respond better to partials at longer muscle lengths, while glutes benefit most from full-range movement. So again, Menser was more right than wrong. Menser also emphasized exercise variety. Instead of repeating the same movement, he chose multiple exercises for the same muscle group. He called this neuromechanical matching, stimulating the muscle from different angles and strength curves to recruit more fibers. Modern biomechanics research supports this concept showing that changing exercise angles enhances muscle activation and overall growth potential. So, is Mike Menser's training style effective for everyone? The answer depends on the individual. Beginners might benefit from slightly higher volumes because their recovery capacity is still developing. But for advanced lifters, especially natural athletes who train intensely, Menser's low-volume, high-intensity system can be a powerful, time-efficient, and sustainable way to build muscle without burning out. In the end, Mike Menser was more right than wrong. He proved that smart, focused effort beats endless volume. Modern science agrees with his core principle. Train hard, recover harder, and you'll grow stronger.